Hi, I am Amanda Peldau. I'm the owner of Triad Tutoring. And today what I wanted to look at is how to use your calculator to help on the math sections of the new digital SAT. Um, so I'm in the Blue Book app um, right now and I am selecting the SAT and the SAT practice test one. And I'm going to go ahead and start this test. And on the old paper and pencil test, there was a um, section where you couldn't use your calculator, but now you can use your calculator on the entire thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip over these reading and writing questions, um, just so that way we can get to the math sections. If I had really been taking the test, I would have started with the reading and writing and then you get a 10 minute break and then you get to dig into the math, my favorite section. So up here in the right hand side, we have our reference sheet if we need it. Um, this has some of the geometry formulas and then I have my calculator. Um, so this is basically a Desmos calculator, but it's built in right on the side of your test. And so I wanna focus on a few ways that we use this on this new SAT. So one of the ways you can use it is with equivalent expressions. So this one, easy enough to solve with algebra for most students, but if you came across it and you weren't really sure, you can set that first uh, equation equal to y. So y equals x squared plus 3x minus 40. And we can zoom out so that we can better see this parabola. We see it there. And then what we can do is we can test out our answer choices until we find one where it overlaps, right? So if I try out answer choice A, so again, I'm going to put Y equals, and then I'm going to put the answer choice, X minus four times X plus 10. Close, but not all the way. So that one didn't overlap all the way with the red, right? So now let's try answer choice B. So Y equals X minus five plus eight. And there we go, it overlaps. And I could try the others. And if I tried C just to show you that it doesn't work. So X minus eight times X plus five, that one didn't work and so on. So um, again, we saw that when we did answer choice B, it overlapped and that means that they are the exact same um, equation, right? They're equivalent. And if I wanted to double check, I could take that off, put it back on, and I can see that, yes, that blue one is fully overlapping. So that's one example. Another example is here at number eight. So what's the positive solution to the given equation? So again, I could solve this algebraically, multiply by x plus six on both sides, distribute, I end up getting a quadratic, I need to factor. Um, that may or may not be the fastest solution for students. So instead, what I can do is I could set each side of the equation equal to y, right? So y equals 55 divided by x plus six. And then I can do a second equation with the other side. So just y equals x. And now I can see that they have this overlap, this intersection, right? And so the intersection is the solution. And since I'm looking for the X value, well, in this case, it doesn't matter, they were the same. Um, but I can see that I have negative 11. Oh, and I have to be careful because it asks for the positive solution. Or the other option is five. And since I'm looking for that positive solution, then five is what I would wanna enter. Right. So again, if my algebra skills were not very strong or I just wanted to double check my work, this is a nice way to do it. So that's a good one for equivalent expressions. Another place we will use it is for intercepts. So here I have g of x, or I can just make that y equals 11 and then one twelfth. And then to the, 
and I want that to be to the X. Okay, so I've got my equation in there and then it wants to know the Y intercept. And what's nice is the um, intercepts and the intersections are already um, highlighted on there. So again, if you're new to Desmos, um, it does have some parts that are a little bit easier to use than a traditional graphing calculator like a TI-83. So here we can see the Y intercept is 0 comma 11. That's very easy to do on my calculator. Another way that we might use our calculator is to plug in numbers. So this one is a good example of one where plugging in numbers makes it really easy. So if I try plugging in, I don't really need the graph for this situation. I can just do um, one plus 604 right? and then to the zero and I get one as my answer. But when the time is zero, I want it to be 604. So right away, I know that answer choice A doesn't work. So then I can go down the line. I am pretty sure that B is not gonna work, right? Because that's even smaller um, than the one I just tried. And since it's raised to the zero power, it's still just gonna be one. So that didn't work. When I try C, I get 604 times that, that one gave me the right answer. And D also would not work. So this one again, I may have been able to just solve that, um, but the easiest thing to do is to just pop it into your calculator, plug in your uh, potential data points. You might need to use two. This one, we got lucky that we only needed to use zero, which is the easiest one to deal with. Um, but I could have moved on and tried one and made sure that that worked as well. Um, and I'll do that now just so you can see. And um, you can see 606.42 when I round it. Um, so that does work with the second point as well. So if I just wanted an extra double check. So makes that part very easy. Um, another place we will see this is intersections. So systems of equations are on there uh, pretty often that they're tested and having your calculator makes them very easy to do. So we have y equals x plus 20, and then we have y equals 8x. And again, we might have to kind of zoom out or move it around a little bit, um, but we can see that there's just the one intersection right there. So makes it a very simple equation. Another example of intersections or systems of equations is here on 18. And this is all in just test one, module one. Um, one of the things I like about the Desmos calculator compared to a graphing calculator is that you do not have to set um, it equal to Y before you enter the equation. So that takes away some of the work and some of the potential for simple errors. So I'm entering both of those equations and then I can see uh, do they intersect? And I'm going to kind of move this around and zoom in a little bit because it's hard to find that intersection. There we go. And then we can see it's 7, negative 2, and we just have to be careful with what uh, they want. And they want in the question why. So negative 2. So again, very simple to do systems of equations, uh, much easier than it, than it used to be. Um, maximum and minimum is another thing that you would want to be familiar with. So uh, with quadratics, thinking about the maximum or minimum is the same thing as saying the vertex, right? So here, um, we're just entering this equation. We're going to get the parabola and I'm going to zoom out so I can get a better view of this and I can see the minimum is down here at negative 30.25. Um, and it, oh, I'm sorry, it wants the X value. So it's at 6.25. So again, makes it much simpler. You don't have to deal with the discriminant and the quadratic formula. You can just pop it into your calculator and uh, look for that vertex point. And 
one other example of that that's a little bit more complex is this one here. So I can't directly put 2y equals c into here, right? I'm going to get an error because they don't know what that constant c is. But what I can do is I can look at the second equation, the parabola. And I can see that it does make a parabola. We knew it was going to because it's an x squared. And if I'm thinking about what the shape of this graph is going to be, right? I could say that that's, uh, if I solve for y, it's y equals c over two, right? And I know that y equals a number is just a horizontal line. The only way I can have a horizontal line intersect at just one point would be if it went right across that vertex point, right? So that's the line I need. So I could then find y because it's just the y coordinate of the vertex, right? So going back to this parabola, I can see the y value is 10.125, right? That's my maximum point. So if I say y equals, so, 10.125, and then it was times two. And that's what equals C. And so that's my C value. Um, one thing I want to point out while we're here is this is a grid and problem where I need to type in my answer. Um, sometimes you will get um, fractions that are don't end, right? And so you have to round them or truncate them. Um, for me, I get nervous doing that. Like, what if I round it wrong? So what I like to do is just change it back to a fraction. And you can see that you can do that here with this button. I can change it back to a fraction. And so now I see that it's 81 fourths. And for me, I like to change it to a fraction. That way I know it's as reduced as it can be. Um, and that just, I prefer to write it in that way. So um, that's another tip. Um, this particular module doesn't have an example of it, but another thing that is nice about um, the Desmos calculator built in here compared to a TI-83 is that you can uh, grid or you can graph uh, conics. So every now and then you will see a conics question on the SAT. So a circle, for example, um, I will just show you really quickly. Um, and then I can see I have graphed my circle. And so again, that can make things easy when you're dealing with circle questions um, compared to the old version of the test. So those are a couple things that you can take with you onto the test, because like I said, there are a lot of ways that the calculator can be used. And um, even if you forget the algebra way uh, don't get scared off by a problem. Try to see what you can do um, in your calculator. And thanks so much.